Hello everybody and I hope you're having a fantastic day and in this video I'm coming back at you with another vid and this time I'm going to be talking about the updates especially expecting 35 cost awakenings to come out with the little uh, thing they did with the box spawn over here and added 37 but no they didn't do that so anyways moving on from there let's talk about the actual stuff they came out with in this update and what's not okay so we got new items added the furniture spawn so you could do those if you want to but keep in mind these are just going to be for the uh just to grab them to be fairly honest just for the looks and what's not for your room and what's not because honestly these don't offer like the top tier stats for furniture items the last collab we did offered uh furnitures for 1800 like the stats 1800 something i forgot what it was but yeah as you can see right there none of these offer up to 1800 at all in their stats or what's not and it's not even just the evil collab it's few, a few other the collabs like i think the latest being like the seven deadly sins um are the oldest the oldest not the latest but the oldest being like seven deadly sins where they offer like the uh the i can't name the furniture but it was like 1540 i think at its maximum stats but yeah it's, it's higher than this so that that's these like furniture items are not top tier but they're here and then we got the gift shop we have some stuff right here that ends on the 21st of this month it was so not so i, I give them a clap for that one I'll give them a clap for trying, but it still doesn't make this game feel any better than it, like, originally does in the first place. They were trying to add a Valentine's concept to the whole thing around these to make it feel like more gifting and Valentine's-y and what's not. I don't even know how that goes. I don't really celebrate these types of things, so sorry about that. But yeah, um, I'll give them a clap for that, but that's all I'm giving them. Um, it, it didn't really make this game feel any different to me, like, whatsoever. And then we got the new Lunar Year campaign. Well, it's not new, because it's been here for a while. Pretty much, actually, most of the stuff's gone, as you can see right here. But they do have some of the stuff still going on and activated, so pretty much they just pretty much told you yeah it's still going here it's still activating it's still some of the stuff still going on it's just not like not like uh what it was when it first started and what's to not so yeah that's pretty much to cover that and then we got the guild grand tournament guild grand tournament is here um you could bet you could like there's no losing if you're not in the grill grand tournament there's no losing with what you're doing you can bet for the guild grand tournament and get yourself some cookies and what's not depending on the guild you're betting on if you can't decide it's all right if you don't want to decide whatsoever and just keep your cookies and what's not but yeah, if it's an obvious bet, you might you might want to look into it and what's not because yeah, um, they offer some pretty nice stuff in here: Colosseum medals, Mobius medals, droplets of ether, and awakening or pieces. If you're missing Colosseum and Mobius medals, I definitely would first of all use your cookies on those, and then you can start worrying about awakening orbs and droplets of ether a little after you're done worrying about those and what's not. And this is pretty expensive for the orbs. There are so much more cheaper ways to get the orbs. So I wouldn't really recommend going for the orbs like that because that's ridiculous. I mean, you're getting droplets of ether and awakening or pieces for cheaper than the orbs in here. So yeah, and the Mobius medals and the Colosseum medals. And they're far more scarce. Like you could do ordeals and get these by chance. Like legitimately from the boss drop. Colosseum medals and Mobius medals only appear like every once in a while. So yeah. Whether you want to bet or not is up to you. This one's a pretty obvious answer, though. If you actually look at the guilds of what's going on, they go as low as, like, a 340k that hasn't been on. Okay, so it says he wasn't on for a day. I guess he recently got back on. So, yeah, it goes as low as that. 10 members, but as you can see right there. And then the lowest they got over here is a 500k. So, I, I think this one's a pretty obvious answer in what's going on. But, yeah, um... You got the option to bet if you want to, and what's so not. So that way you may or may not earn more limit badges of what's so not. But yeah, that's pretty much what it's good for. As for my guild, some of you might be wondering, we did not make it to the grand tournament. Um, our rank is actually pretty high for us screwing up. We are 142. Oh my god, we made so many mistakes. So yeah, <laughs> I can't really say much about us not making it to the guild grand tournament. Just gotta look at what we did wrong, try to fix it to the best, best maximum as possible, and then move on from there. So I'm surprised though, because we screwed up a lot. Like I'm talking a lot. Like we pretty much drained ourselves dry and what's so not. So I'm I'm pretty happy about getting rank 142 without technically. Well, I mean, we did try our best, but like how bad we screwed up. 
it easily looked like we could have been put in a rank and that's not even the case ironically so that is amazing that is astonishing to be fairly honest that we made it that high on like our ranking when we screwed up really badly last time i mean we were mostly all on we were highly active during rgb but we screwed up a lot to the point where it, it, it mattered but like it was really bad so yeah there's that and what's so not so that's pretty much where i was standing at when it comes to rgb and what's so not that's why you won't see me in the grand tournament and what's not. It's pretty much the news. It's pretty much the update and what's not. Okay, so let's actually get into the event. The Valentine Surprise. Okay, so we got over here a new event, Valentine Surprise and what's not. How this is going to work out is you're going to have two, well, three different ways of actually being able to obtain resources slash rewards within this event. We will have no prestige rankings. Thank you, because they are a pain in the butt sometimes, and I honestly don't like them, to be fairly honest. But anyways, item exchange right here. We have the item exchange, so you can obtain stuff through the item exchange. Very, very nice, because you're going to be seeing me do this, but you're only going to be seeing me through this for, like, the fruits, because the fruits are really easy to obtain, and I highly recommend doing it for the fruits. The drop of ether is pretty easy to obtain. Awakening or peace might be. Time, spear orb might be easy to obtain. Uh, droplet of ether is probably not, but the drop, well, I mean, drop of ether is probably not up here, but the droplet of ether down here for 40 definitely easy and maybe the premium eggs if you're out on premium eggs it's like these are great ways to grab resources besides going for the monster amazing resource uh but like it's amazing resource method is what i'm trying to say sorry about that okay so moving out from there we got the prestige rewards you're going to be able to earn yes the subject scrolls are in here if i could show you right there so yes we got the subject scrolls in here and we got the item and then we got the key in here. So yes, they are obtainable with it here. It was to that also. But then the, uh, I think it's the ticket spot. Yes, it's the ticket box spot. I don't know why it's not over here instead. But yeah, because most of the box spots are over. You can already see that most of the box spots are over here. They added it here instead. They don't have the subject scroll with it here. You can obtain some other stuff with it here too. Like the tapsies, baby. If you're out on uh, uh, stuff to upgrade your level for your gear, you can grab that in here as well. They do have a drop of ether and enhancement jewel, so that's that's kind of nice, I guess. They do offer some stuff in here. I don't know why they have an SSR guaranteed ticket in here. That's not really going to help out much. But anyways, yeah, they offer some other stuff within the box spawn and what's not as well within here. So let's actually go over the monster and what's so not. Okay, so we got the monster right here. Beloved Passy, I can't even say the name, Chocolat. She is a 36 cost monster, which I call BS, considering that they came out with, you know, 37 cost. Come on, A-Team, you gotta have standards. Seriously, you're coming out with a 37 cost, and you're not even really updating anything around the whole scenario and concept of you coming out with them in the first place. You have to take responsibility. It's your game. Anyways, moving on from there. Yeah, it's a 36 cost monster. And it's got the 4k awakening, so it's going to be giving around as much stats. If you like awaken it all the way, it's going to be giving around as much stats as your 33 cost gem spawn monster. It's actually going to be 1k under. I actually did the math so that way you actually get like a technical, completely um, understanding of how much stats is going to give. It's 1k under a gem spawn to 33 cost. But the ability for this monster is actually not bad. Like for event monsters, this has a pretty good ability. Okay, so let's actually get into the ability. Okay, so we got ability power of 220, damage is two times, 100% of the time. Not bad. It's okay damage, I guess you could say. Confuses all enemies for 60 seconds with a success value of 70. That's that's not bad at all. Um, this could be helpful in Colosseum and possibly guild battles. If you're like a treasure hunter and you're starting off and you want to confuse them, that's not bad because if you can confuse them, it can prevent them from attacking or using moves. And if they can't attack or use moves, that's definitely going to block their unison and the fact of them doing damage at all. So that's not bad, but you got to kind of combo it with something that increases the... Um, decreases their uh, status line or resistance to be fairly honest and then we got heals all is by temp all for 10 percent of their max hp every five seconds for 40 seconds not bad continuous heal it's something and removes the debuffs from all allies so that's not bad as well and then here's where it really starts to kick in this is why i'm calling this monster good in the first place besides it being a time 36 cost because there's not a lot of time monsters out and on top of it, this is going to be a helpful monster for when the star monster comes out because of the ability it does. 
I, at least I think, um, you know, they have, like, a lot of monsters for the time, um, not time, but Star Dragon that removes, uh, buffs from all allies, then this may not be as useful, but for the most part, I see this could be a useful monster for when this Star Dragon comes out because of what it's about to do that I'm about to talk about right now. Increases the attack and magic attack of all allies by 30% for 60 seconds, it's right here at the very bottom. But, if you get it to its third awakening, it increases it technically by 60% for 60 seconds. And then, for the first two right here, it increases the attack and magic attack buff limit of all allies by 20% for 60 seconds. So, this is one of those monsters that increase the buff limit of all allies by 20% uh, for 60 seconds. If you don't remember monsters that could do that, we have Alberon, and then we have, uh, what's her name? Reti. Uh, a lot of guys' favorites for... Personally, I don't know why, but anyways moving on from there. Um, I mean I do know why but I, it doesn't make sense to me personally uh, They have dermots that decrease the stats of How much you're actually getting because they decrease it by like 30 or 20 percent or like they have dermots that help like uh, Increase the defense and mag defense of the opponents. This monster doesn't have a dermot so that's where it first kicks in the second thing is this gives as much gear score as your Michaela. Michaela is being the best buff limit removal monster out right now, and by far the best stat on the best stat stick as well on top of it. So it has a good ability and it's a excellent stat stick. It's better than all these three monsters I'm talking about. But when it comes to guild battles, this would be by far the next best choice because it's 36 cost, so it's up to date. Now keep in mind it is a time, so if they do use light and dark, which can be common under some scenarios, this might not work out as well. But you're gonna be seeing a lot of stars when you're up there because star is gonna be the best countermeasure, quick countermeasure that you could probably think of using to be fairly honest. But yeah. Yeah, um, it's 36 cost, so it's higher cost than Repti and Alberon, so it's going to get more battle score. And on top of it, it doesn't have a Dermot, so that's why I'm saying, like, it's a pretty good monster to use for guild battles. It might be for when the Star Dragon comes out, I'm not sure. But yeah, they do have that, and what's so not. And you could actually obtain these Summoning Scrolls. You could obtain four of them. Four of them will be in the Prestige Rewards right here. You have to get to 500k Prestige maximum before you can actually obtain all four of these Summoning Scrolls. If I could show you right here. Yeah, so they got four of them right here, and then they have the next one with within the um what's it called i can't even think of the name for the item the new item that just came out it's like the chocolate uh it's right here imperfect cake they do have the next one in here but obviously you're gonna need six they have five awakenings so where can i get the next one azra this is not making too much sense because it doesn't pop up in any other type of rewards. It's not in the box spawn. There's only four within the prestige. And then there's one within the item exchange. Uh, I don't like what they did here. But I guess it's going to help. Because considering that you may have to grind um, a good amount. Before you actually even get five in the first place. What they decided to do is they decided they're going to make the last one pretty much the summoning scroll pieces from the drop rewards these rewards have a small chance to drop in every difficulty but yeah they offer summoning scroll pieces you're going to need 10 of them before you can actually reforge the monster you can see right here i think they were trying to add this concept in the first place so yes you're going to need 10 of them to actually um get the uh monster so also they have uh different daily missions available each day so i think each and every day they're going to switch it up so it's going to make it easier to obtain these summoning scroll pieces but i believe the six one's going to be obtained by constant grinding and then it may be obtained a little bit uh, at least to be fairly honest, within the event missions, if not at all. So yeah, that's pretty much where you're going to be getting these summoning scrolls and stuff. And also, I forgot to mention the prestige boost. You're going to have prestige boost as well right here. And what's not, definitely the box spawn is going to give it. So if you're interested in that, you get that from the box spawn. And that's some of the previous stuff as well. They even go as low as uh, Saturn. So that's very, very nice. If you got Saturn, that might help as well for a 10% prestige boost and what's not. And they have some other stuff right here that you may or may not have that also will help boost prestige on top of it. So it's very, very nice. So yeah, they do offer that as well. So you, if you need to boost your prestige, that's definitely some ways you could do it. I personally would only get a 20% boost because I pretty much don't have nearly any of the stuff to be fairly honest. But yeah, um, that pretty much settles it for this video and what's not. 
thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching it. I have to shortly review the monster. The monster is definitely a nice monster to use, especially in guild battles. Uh, can be useful in player versus enemy. Keep in mind, um, buff removal is pretty common. I'm not going to say it's like common common to the point where it's useless to use a monster like this, but it can be in some circumstances a common thing that enemies do and what's not but definitely no pushover for guild battles it's 36 cost and like repti and alberon that have buff limits as well like uh, they um increase buff limits this one's a 36 cost so it's gonna give more battle score it may not give as much stats but it's definitely gonna give more battle score and on top of it it doesn't have dermot so that's very very nice now keep in mind those are star monsters so they might be better for battle score depending on the situation because they have more of elemental advantage than a time does but time's a good counteraction to star and you're gonna see a lot of people at star as well it really depends on the situation so definitely if you don't have a buff limit removal if you can farm for this if you see this possible for you to get 5k prestige I definitely would. I definitely would for your guild. It's going to help out a lot. Imagine having a 100% stat buff increase. That's that's going to help out a lot for when you're doing guild crystals and you're attacking the guild crystals. It's going to help, trust me. So if you don't have a buff limit removal monster or perhaps you um need one, if you don't have a buff limit removal monster for your guild, I'm going to cut that part. If you don't have a buff limit removal monster for your guild, I definitely would look into this at least and try this out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped out. This is the Azrath. I'll catch you in the next video. I'm out. Peace.